Hi everybody, I'm Mark Chaffardini with Big Fanboy and GoSeeTalk.com. I'm here at Fantastic Fest with director Jim Hosking. How are you, Jim? I'm doing very well, thanks, Mark. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say the name of your short. You did G, but I, yeah. I've been told you're not supposed to say because you don't want to like spoil it. But oh, okay. Is yours a spoiler? Um, is it a spoiler? I don't quite know what you mean. What yeah, well, I don't know either. It's, it's, oh, oh, is the title of it a spoiler? Yeah, because it always comes at the end, and it always sort of you know captures what the segment was about. So yeah, well, that's true. I, I think the um, title of the film was supposed to be a surprise at the end of each one, but uh, it's not really. I didn't really notice the titles of pretty much any of the films. I just sort of thought, do I like the film or not? You know, that's all that I was thinking about. But no, I don't think mine's a spoiler. I think actually mine's probably quite within about a minute. You could probably guess what mine is. Gotcha. Well, um, if that's the case, uh, Jim's short is called Granddad, <laughs> and uh, it is uh, kind of creepy and kind of gives a, uh, a big F you to the, uh, the arrogant teenage crowd, the sort of hipster wannabe crowd, right? You know, um, I mean, like, you know, the, the gold chain wearing, you know, I'm... Oh, every I suppose, yeah, I suppose it does, actually, in a way, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, but um, really, uh, I suppose... Uh, well, the guy who wears the gold chain in the film is like a good friend of mine who uh, is... I'm sorry for that. You know, we'll, we'll apologize. No, 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 I don't mean it like that. I mean, he's... Uh, yeah, I probably like making fun of him. So that's probably what it is. He's very, very skinny, and uh, so I enjoy just having him sort of just in a pair of underpants with a gold chain and, and sort of uh, posing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You sort of want him to die by the end of the film. <laughs> I told him that just now in a text message. He was quite excited. He said he wished he'd been here. People were cheering when he was killed. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got G. Um, when you got the letter, what other ideas did you have? Um, well, I had. I actually chose the letter. Um, oh, really? You, okay. Yeah, you could either be given a letter or you could choose one. And at first I said, I'll, I'll do whatever. And then I thought, actually, I've got an idea for G. Or rather, I've written a, a film. Um, which is called The Greasy Strangler, and I thought, well, I'll do something about The Greasy Strangler, and I'll do Greasy, G for Greasy. But then it was quite uh, quite sort of convoluted, the scene that I was going to film. It was sort of, it would have required a bit more money and a bit more time. Not mm -hmm. a great deal, but a bit. So then I just changed, changed uh, direction mm -hmm. and went for Grandad. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of motivations were you having? Because it looked like, you know, um, there was the grand, there was a granddad and the grandson, and they were sort of it was a mirror image of each other, like mm -hmm. in time. So, were, you know, were you trying to say anything about you know what you'll eventually become one day, or anything, um, anything deep like that? No, well, I mean, I wasn't consciously trying to say that. I suppose I was. Uh, no, not re not not really. I mean, it was just. The way that I work, I suppose, is I I sort of just think of things, and then there's just little, you know, things kind of evolve and become whatever they become. But I was uh, I was pleased that I found amongst the you know all the old old men who we were sort of offered through casting, offered through casting <laughs> sounds like some kind of sacrifice. Um, who anyway, who were sort of being made available? That sounds even worse, like they're old prostitutes. Anyway, um, there was one guy who turned up who, who so he didn't turn up. He was a it was a picture of him had sort of long hair and kind of reminded me of Rich, who, who's my mate, who I cast as the young bloke. And I just thought they'd sort of look good together. And they definitely, you know, they definitely sort of had a similar kind of look. I found that, yeah, I mean, maybe sort of deep down, I found that quite funny, that there's a, something funny about the fact that somebody is um, taking the piss out of somebody else or being quite mean or sarcastic or sort of, you know, caustic. And then you do feel, well, yeah, you're just, in a way, you're just a younger version of that man. You know, you're going to get your come up in some time, but mm -hmm. it just happens a bit quicker, obviously, within four minutes. But, um, yeah. Well, speaking of the four minutes, that's sort of the key to each of these segments. They're within a time frame. So kind of, what kind of struggles did you uh, run into telling your story in a condensed time frame? Um, well, actually, one thing. I, I wonder whether they are all four minutes or not. I don't know. Felt it's like, like th three or four yeah, minutes, yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't... Uh, I don't know. I sort of feel like... I mean, probably because I've made quite a lot of commercials and stuff and quite a few, you know, quite a few shorts and whatever. I, I feel like I knew kind of what I could do within the time. I mean, there's just really the... I suppose the struggle is to... Um, 
yeah, to make something where you feel like I, I mean, I think quite a lot of people feel like you can't really create any characters or really tell a story in a short film. Like it's just like a little snapshot of something. But I really wanted to try to for there to be like a sort of relationship between them and uh, yeah, and there to be a sort of I suppose some kind of feeling of a narrative, you know, that you you could actually sort of care about. Um, I don't know. No, I mean, uh, maybe I found it a bit tricky to get it down to whatever it was, like four minutes and probably a few seconds over, you know, sort of struggling for a while, mm -hmm. um, torturing the editor, who's a friend of mine, and yeah. But then I think maybe I could have, it could have been another 20 seconds longer and nobody would have cared, but mm -hmm. it just was like, Ugh, trying to just, yeah, like I lost a few lines of dialogue. There's a there's a scene at the beginning where they're talking with each other, where there was some stuff that I found quite funny. And I, I, I quite like um, like awkwardness and sort of pauses and like quite extended sort of space, you know? And so I, I tried to preserve that, but then, so I had to lose some stuff as well. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's yeah. a really long, boring answer. No, that's okay. And, and, and awkward is good because I mean, you know, that that's they they start off in one room. It's a two two uh, barring the bathroom. It's the like yeah. living room, a bedroom, and a bathroom. So it's a yeah. very cramped you know yeah. space to be in. Totally. Yeah. And so they're in the chairs and they're sort of sunk in with their knees high and you know they're <laughs> drinking the what do they call a supermarket cooking bourbon or no, something. So, well, yeah, like it's bra brandy. Yeah, oh. but uh, yeah, yeah. No, but that's true. Yeah, it is. It's definitely. Um, yeah, it was definitely meant to feel sort of claustrophobic and sort of a bit, you know, sort of... I mean, it's very British, that kind of thing. It sort of feels cr a bit crappy, a bit archaic, sort mm -hmm. of maybe quite sort of depressing in a sort of bleak, tragic, kind of funny kind of way. And just two people living on top of each other, yeah? Just driving each other crazy, you know? And, uh, yeah, I mean, that was... I thought that was where a lot of the comedy sort of came from, mm -hmm. you know? Where you're just... It's two people stuck together who they they happen to be related, so that's why they're in the same space. But it's like you know you know what it's like if you you answer an advert to to get a room in an a apartment or something, you end up living with some guy you've got nothing in common with, <laughs> yeah, and just right. having terrible conversations and just feeling miserable about it. You know, it's that kind of thing. Well, it's kind of funny. We're in the what looks to be the twilight room, and I would say out of the movie, yours felt the most creepy twilightish. Um, not Twilight, the movie Twilight Zone. Yeah. Um, what kind of influences did you have, whether in the skit or your own personal? Um, personal? Well, I suppose uh, I suppose I have probably quite a lot of influences just from sort of you know British uh, TV and and stuff like growing up. That's like uh, I mean maybe mine feels a bit a bit a bit that sort of British thing. You know, again, like I'm saying, sort of. Uh, yeah, a bit sort of grotty. Does that word exist in America or not? I'm not sure. Grotty means sort of uh, a bit sort of d like dirty, unhygienic, okay. sort of like, you know, bad suits, bad hair, bad <laughs> house. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, you know, I like a lot of different stuff, really. I mean, whether it's like Monty Python, Ingmar Bergman. I mean, I like, I like dialogue and, yeah. I mean, I'm not like a horror filmmaker, that's the thing. It's like, it's a, I guess it's like a horror film, The ABCs of Death too. but my purpose with it was to just really make something that I liked and I mean there is maybe there's a you know there's a bit of something a bit horrific in it but I was really wanting to make something that I would find very funny I think if I watched it you know and so I wanted it to be different to everything else you know stand out by having a bit of space and a bit of breath and a bit of yeah that kind of awkwardness you know because because when I think of horror, I think of like it's like an assault on your senses quite a lot of the time, and not always, but it can be quite frenetic. And so mm -hmm. I wanted mine to be a bit different to that, really. Well, it ends differently. Going the way it ends is I don't want to go back there. <laughs> it's uh, inexcusable. Yeah. yeah. Jim, thank you for granddad. Thanks, Great man. segment. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Nice one. Cheers.